Okay, hello everybody. Today we're here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and the Piper Comanche 250. We have a 196 nautical mile flight from Lima Bravo Echo Arnold Palmer Regional to Echo Lima Mike Elmira Regional. We're flying with real weather and the weather looks pretty bad today, so we're going to do something different and fly IFR. We're also going to explore all the awesome features of AccuSim's Piper Comanche. Should be an awesome flight, so let's hop into the pilot seat and get started. All right, we're sitting here in the Piper Comanche. You can see we've got the control locks on and we've got passengers. That's a feature, which I'll show you, that can be configured with the EFB, which is right down here. So if you click on it, you can place it anywhere you want in the cabin. And you can see it's got the usual uh, setups for showing you the wind direction and the configuration of the aircraft. It's got full checklists that we'll use in flight. It's got toggles for chocks, for tie downs, for things like that. You can configure different types of GPSs to be used. You've got weights and balances here where you can put in your different passengers and they'll show up along with baggage. And then this is amazing. This is the airframe, uh, the engine, the electrical system, and all the parts can individually wear. And you can even choose what condition you get your unique uh, livery in. So uh, this one I decided that I bought used. So it came with parts that already have wear on them and with hours already on the Hobbs meter. And as those hours accrue, those parts will wear. Or if you abuse those parts, they make it damaged and break. So you have all sorts of failures in flight. It's a living, breathing aircraft, which is just fantastic. It also has a full walk around that's interactive, uh, which you have to see. So we'll start by getting the master on. We'll check our fuel gauges left and right, and we've got full tanks in the main fuel tanks. So then I'll head down here and we'll get the switches on for our exterior walk around. And I won't show you the full walk around because it'll take too much time, but I'll show you a couple highlights from it. So now that we've got our switches set, we can go out and you can click on the ailerons and move them. You can open up gas tanks, unscrew gas caps, look in and actually see the level of the gas. In this case, there's none in the wingtip tank here. But if I head over uh, to the wing tank, I can pull fuel samples and those samples will tell me and change something about the fuel. So I can see if there's water or contamination in. This one looks good, it's Avgas Blue. I can go to the main uh, right wing tank unscrew it and look in and see that it's got blue f <laughs> fuel inside of it all the way up to the rim. I can click and remove chocks. I can check the oil and actually read the oil dipstick. I can put my hand on the pitot tube and it'll glow red to let me know that it's warm and working. I can click and move all of the control surfaces and I've configured baggage so here it is and I've got to open up the baggage door and load up the baggage and then close and secure the baggage door that was based on what I configured in the EFB earlier so just fantastic so we'll continue with our checklist we're checking that the circuit breakers are in I just popped one to show it to you down there they're all poppable of course all of our switches are off we'll get the rotating beacon on we'll check that our Fuel selectors are set to the desired fuel tanks, so I've got them both on left and right fuel tanks. Make sure that our mixture is to rich, which it is, that's the red knob there. Middle knob is the throttle, and then the right knob is the prop switch, and you can configure that as a traditional prop switch uh, or as the, the one that's actually on this model, the Comanche, which is black. So push the prop full forward and we cracked the throttle a little bit. Next, we'll make sure that the prop is clear. We'll open up the window. Clear prop. Head back down here, get the master on. Fuel pump on. We'll check that we have fuel pressure, and we do. Now we'll turn the fuel pump back off. Okay, next we'll head over to the silver button on the right, which is the primer. We'll pull that out and prime the engine with three to five strokes. 
Note we've also got a carb heat button next to that because we have a carbureted engine. We'll leave that in. Okay, keys are in. We'll get magnetos to both. There is a separate starter button that's just to the right of the magneto switch. So you're going to press that in. And we've got a good start. Now the engine does sound a little rough and that's because this is a used aircraft. And when I looked at the engine overview page it showed me cylinders 2 and 6 need a little work. And even said that they're prone to uh, misfire at low RPMs. But I expect that to smooth out once we uh, bring up the RPMs uh, during the run up. So we'll pay attention to that. Alright, while we're getting everything set up I'll open up for flight and take you through the flight brief. So we're running with real weather, and as you can see, it is a mess of polygons calling out convective sigmets all over the place. You can see all those colored squares are the ceilings, and green is VFR, blue is marginal VFR, and red is IFR. So we're starting at Arnold Palmer, which is green, so we can depart VFR at Arnold Palmer, but as we head northeast, we're going to get into IFR conditions. Elmira is marginal VFR currently uh, with light rain and if we look at the TAF we can see that it's predicted to become IFR. So we're going to fly IFR for this since we're flying into IFR weather. If I click on play then I can see the radar traces for the weather and not too much happening at Arnold Palmer but off to the northeast you can see lots of green and yellow showing us the track of the rain that's covering our destination field. I'll clear all of that off so we can see our flight plan. So we're going to depart with radar vectors to Johnstown VOR. From there we're going to join the Victor 106 airway to the Rashi intersection, then join Victor 33 to Phillipsburg VOR, then Victor 35 to Stony Fork VOR, then radar vectors to our initial approach fix for the ILS for our destination airport. Looking at the plate for the ILS for runway 6, we need to arrive at Unoli at 4,000 feet, descend to 3,200 for Jokin, and that's where we'll intercept the ILS glide slope and come in for our landing. Arnold Palmer doesn't have a published procedure, instead we'll be using the takeoff minimums, obstacle departure procedures, and diverse vector area procedure. If we look at runway 24, we can see that that is climb heading 236 degrees to 2,300 before proceeding on course. Clearance delivery is a phone number here instead of a radio frequency. We've already got our IFR clearance, so let's contact ground and get our taxi clearance. Arnold Palmer Ground, November 7791 Papa JL Aviation, taxi with information and whiskey. Taxi and hold short, runway 24 via Alpha, November 7791 Papa. All right, clearing our right, clearing our left, clear straight ahead, game on. While we are taxiing, I'd like to point out that I am not IFR rated. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't even have my pilot's license yet. If you've been following the channel, I'm working on getting my private pilot's license and I'm at the prep for check ride phase for that, uh, for my VFR rating. So, no formal IFR training, uh, just doing the best I can with this flight, so bear with me. And I love the sounds of the Comanche. You can hear the wing flexing, that's kind of that oil can denting sound and you can see the wings moving and you can also hear cylinder two and six misfiring that I was talking about because I've got a used plane here. So we will go to the run-up checklist and take ourselves through the run-up on the tablet here. So we'll start by getting our throttle in up to 2000 RPM. Next we will go over to the magnetos and let me try to get the angle here so I can see both the magnetos and the RPM gauge, which is a little challenging. There we go. That should do it. So now we're going to do mag left. Oop, went, went too far to mag right. We've got our drop. Click it back over. And back to both. Alright, we've got a good drop on both magnetos. We'll do that again since I accidentally skipped mag left and our drop was within range. 
We'll check our engine instruments. They are all in the green, and now we get to exercise the prop and listen to the sounds as we do this. I love it. There's a great video from the developer about how they recorded actual Comanche sounds for this. Next, we'll check that our flight controls are free and correct. Everything is moving as it should. Arnold Palmer Tower, November 7791 Papa, holding shore, runway 24. Cleared for departure, runway 24, 7791 Papa. All right. I love how this handles on the ground, and it definitely it responds to things like individual brake wear. So if you have a right brake that's wearing versus a left brake, you'll have different braking force on it. So we've got some weather and some wind to deal with today. And you can see we've got a good crosswind <laughs> takeoff here. This is my first time flying this plane. I haven't practiced for this before this video. So this may be a complete disaster. And I'm not entirely sure how to use all the systems either. I just kind of forewarned. But uh, the checklists are pretty good. Airspeed's alive. Our engine gauges look good. And rotate. Woo, a little bit. Uh, squirrely there, okay. Let's get ourselves back over the runway and level it out. It is pretty windy, and we did have a crosswind uh, takeoff there, which I didn't do very well. You can see, as I uh, launched myself into the air, the wind got under one of the wings and kind of tipped the whole plane um, over to the left, and then I overcompensated off to the right. But we are stabilized now and uh, looking much better. So remember we are flying our obstacle departure procedure, which is essentially runway heading uh, until 2300, and then we've got radar vectors to Johnstown via VOR via ATC. All right, we are on track, so let's sit back and enjoy that awesome flight simulator scenery. We'll get everything shut down here and I've got my red headlamp on that we'll turn on so we can still see what we're doing which is very realistic by the way if you've ever done night flying um, so 
I love this plane. This is like the most awesome general aviation aircraft yet for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I just love all the detail and the sounds and it's very much, it feels like a real aircraft. So it's a little pricey, cost me I think $50, but totally worth it. And this was just beautiful weather to fly in. I, I know it wasn't great weather, but scenery wise, I loved it. Just the sunset turning into night flight was fantastic. Uh, the plane was definitely a handful and I really didn't fully understand the autopilot, but kind of figured it out as I went along. It doesn't work like a conventional autopilot. Um, but my next flight will go much more smoothly. So I hope you enjoy content like this. Uh, I love doing realistic general aviation flying. If that's the type of content you like, be sure to click that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, as always, for flying along with me, and stay tuned for further flight adventures.